today's scripture reading is from Isaiah 40, verses 1 through 11. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that she has served her term, that her penalty is paid, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries out in the wilderness, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain shall be made low. The uneven ground shall become level and the rough places plain. Then the glory of God shall be revealed and all people shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. A voice says, cry out. And I say, what should I cry? All people are grass. Their consistency is like the flower of the field. The grass withers, the flower fades, where the breath of the Lord blows upon it. Surely the people are grass. The grass withers, the flower fades, but the word of our God will stand forever. Get you to a high mountain, O Zion, herald of good tidings. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, herald of good tidings. Lift it up. Do not fear, says, say to the cities of Judea, here is your God. See, the Lord God comes with might and his arm rules for him. His reward is with him and his recompense before him. He will feed his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms and carry them in his bosom and gently lead the mother sheep. Thanks be to God. Would you please join me in the spirit of prayer? Gracious Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable to you, our rock and our Redeemer. Amen. Comfort, O oh comfort my people, says your God. That is the opening verse of today's scripture, and boy do we need to hear that message today. In this difficult time of economic strife, of pandemic, of political divisions. We need to hear these words of comfort more than ever and right now in the second Sunday of Advent as we are going through this season of waiting, of anticipation, of hope, and of peace. We come to these words that can, I hope, give us all a renewed sense of peace in this trying time. This is a call to God to comfort all of us. A response to the lamentations of the people. The people who felt that God was far away, was hidden, had abandoned them. This is the scripture that we come to today. It's from the book of Isaiah. Isaiah is one of the five major prophets in the Old Testament Hebrew scriptures, along with Jeremiah, Ezekiel, Daniel, and the book of Lamentations. Isaiah was written over hundreds of years by multiple authors. The prophet called Isaiah himself, as well as others writing in his name, composed this epic book of the Bible. The book has been divided into three different sections based on the time that we believe they were written. Chapters 1 through 39 were considered first Isaiah, and they were written before the exile of the Jewish leaders and much of the community to Babylon. But today's scripture comes from the very first line of chapter 40, the beginning of the second Isaiah. Second Isaiah includes chapters 40 to 55, and these chapters were written during the exile. And then we come to the third 
section of Isaiah, 3rd Isaiah, chapters 55 to 66, were written after the return to Jerusalem from exile in Babylon and present a renewed and restored part of the story of the people of Israel. Some people have called the book of Isaiah the fifth gospel because it is referenced in the New Testament so many times. Jesus famously quotes from the book of Isaiah when he announces his public ministry for the first time in his hometown of Nazareth. Jesus quotes Isaiah eight times directly and looking at the whole New Testament scriptures, Isaiah is quoted over 50 times. It is clearly an important part of our Christian faith and it is worth exploring this morning. Isaiah, different sections of Isaiah always come up in the lectionary during Advent to prepare us for the coming birth of the Savior. This scripture from the beginning of 2nd Isaiah is a poem. This poem contains words of hope in a moment of darkness. Now this poem specifically talks about the impact of Cyrus the Great, the Persian emperor, had on the people living in exile after the Babylonian destruction of Jerusalem. The poems are filled with hope because Cyrus the Great allows the exiles to return home. This is a moment of profound joy after a period of darkness. But now fine, you might be saying, well, that's an interesting part of Israel's history, but what does this have to do with me? What does it have to do with us today in 2020? What does it have to do with Jesus? What does this have to do with our lives in Canton, Ohio, right now in this time? Well, I feel that this text can teach us a lot about our God, about the fact that God is with us, God is restoring us no matter what. God can provide a sense of peace in even the most difficult times. If only we can let God in, into our hearts, then we can maybe allow God's peace to dwell within us. The reason I think it's important to look back on words written about our God centuries and centuries ago is because it points to the fact that God is always faithful. God is eternal. God is unchanging, everlasting, and permanent. God was there with the Israelites in exile, in the times of destruction, and then in times of peace and prosperity when God changed Cyrus the Great's heart and let the Israelites return home. God always provides a light in this time of darkness. And that is the message of these scriptures from Isaiah chapter 40 today that we desperately need to hear in these times. The words were a prophetic response to the outcries of pain from the people, from God's people. And into this void of despair, the prophet speaks promises which become the basis for the people of God's new future. In this way, it reminds us that what we see in front of us is not the whole story, that there are days coming that are better, that there is hope on the horizon, that God is faithful through all of these times, no matter what, no matter how far away God feels from us or we feel from God, God is there. God is faithful. God is eternal. And God is promising us a new and renewed sense of peace if we will only keep the faith. And I think, again, that is so important in this time when we know 
that there are difficult days coming in this nation. But we know that we will get through it, that there is a new hope, a new life, a new light, a new way that we will be church when all this is said and done. And I can feel that newness coming. It gives me a sense of peace to know, Trinity, this scripture can give us a sense of hope. We are about to celebrate our 150th anniversary. On April 1st of next year, 2021, will mark the day that 150 years earlier, Trinity was established here in Canton. We have survived through so many trials and tribulations, through so much in the history of this nation in that time. And Trinity, I know we will be here through this. We will survive. My hope is another 150 years at least. We can come through this and through all of those challenges and changes that this congregation went through in the generations before God was with them. God was present, God was eternal, and God was providing a sense of renewed peace through all those times of challenge. Because this scripture is about deliverance. The scripture is about comfort. The scripture is about God being our divine shepherd and leading us to safety. And the scripture also comes as a fairly unexpected, unearned, and unprecedented act of divine compassion. And we know, as we come up to celebrate the birth of Christ, that moment, the entrance of Jesus onto the world, stage into the world, the Word made flesh, was an unexpected, unparalleled act of divine compassion. That's what we're talking about today. That's what Isaiah means to us in 2020. That's what Isaiah means to the Christian community as we celebrate Advent. It's unexpected and even startling bit of comfort. And of course, the poem does not promise that all suffering will cease. We know this. It won't for all of us. It didn't for our ancestors and generations that came before in the 150 years of our church's history. All suffering did not cease for the Israelite people once they returned from exile either. It does not deny or change the brokenness of the human condition. However, it does remind us that the unexpected can happen that God still sends comfort into our short, fragile, and frail, but yet wonderful lives like the blades of grass in the wind. This message says to us that here is our God, the God who comes to feed the flock, to gather the lambs, to lead the mother sheep to bring comfort. Here is God in whom one may have hope. Here is God who provides deep, abiding, internal peace. We are invited by this scripture to find that peace inside. Despite all the swirling frustrations around about what we can and can't do, what we've lost, what we've missed, should we wear a mask? Should we wear a mask? How do we go forward? How do we worship? How do we do all these things? Kids in school, kids remote learning. We are full of so much strife, so much angst, so much anxiety right now. And the antidote to that is the peace of Christ found within. So I invite everyone this morning wherever you are, however many folks are gathered around or all alone and watching this video, to take a breath, to close your eyes, to take a moment, to reflect upon, to pray upon that peace of Christ born into the world 
as a tiny babe in a manger. May you find that deep peace inside, despite the swirling chaos and anxiety outside. That is my hope, my prayer for all of you, for all of us. That is the gift that the Prince of Peace brought into this world. Amen.